Um, so we have chromium, Roman numeral three, sulfate. All right, now, um, chromium has uh, this many valence electrons. All right, so it has 24 valence electrons. Um, chromium is a very funky uh, transition metal. It has various charges that it can carry randomly throughout nature, uh, or made that way somehow, or um, crazy things happen to chromium because it's a transition metal, and it has a d orbital. It's the orbital thing. It's kind of, um, once you get into the whole D block on the periodic table, uh, things can get crazy. So, pretty much, a, 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 an easy way to go about making a, um, a name for this or to come up with a, uh, a structure for it or to figure out like how to write it um, in formula form would be to do the same thing for sulfate, count its valence electrons like I did here, and then write its Lewis structure. Its Lewis structure is S. I'll go through the process of writing that out. So you have an S um, O4, and in the formula that you said, we have three of them. That means we have three of them. So, this is a sulfate, for sure. Um, it tells us it right here. And, uh, we have three sulfates. Now, a sulfate is like this. Uh, S goes in the middle. Now, S has six valence electrons. Um, so you would start out just by going like this because things like to be in the most stable form possible. Uh, and this is, the angles are fairly the same here and whatever, so you know it's kind of this, this is the most stable form. Those are going to go on the outside. And um, you know from here that oxygen always, no matter what, always likes to, it would prefer to always obey the octet rule. So, you're going to go like this. All right, well, two, four, six, eight. Sweet, right? Okay, let's do that to the rest of them. Okay. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons for there. All right, but there's a problem though, because sulfur likes to have six electrons around it, uh, or it has a um, six valence electrons available, and we have. If you know how to do formal charge, you got one, two, three, four, and then you're going to say, all right, well, I'm going to add in some electrons here. So five, six, right? Okay. But then what? Well, you have two of these oxygens. They have a formal charge of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So when you're doing formal charge, you only count one of the electrons on this bond that you're making to sulfur right here. So to count how many electrons possible that oxygen has, 
it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's shearing one with sulfur. And you can also say that sulfur is shearing one with oxygen. But to do formal charge, these electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, well, oxygen only likes to have six electrons. But right now it has seven electrons. So, having the seventh electron, you're like, all right, well, that's fine, but two of them can go like that, right? And we know that the next thing that we can do is like this. Sulfur, one, two, three, four. It had an electron here, an electron here, or here, or here, or here, or here, two somewhere around sulfur. Okay, fine. But we can write one here and one here. It doesn't matter. Oxygen, 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 oxygen. All right. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This still has a minus charge because it likes six and it has seven of them. So it's got one more negative than it really likes to have. So that's a minus. Now, we can say the same thing over here. This one's gonna have a minus charge also. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But it has eight, so it's obeying the octet rule, so it's happy. Octet rule, okay, happy. Okay, but now we have these two that would also have a minus charge, but we don't want it to have a minus charge here in the middle. So we have, that can make a double bond. And sulfate has uh, six resonance structures. So I'm not gonna go into that right now because that's a, another whole video. But now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or two, four, six, eight, obeying the octet rule. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now this has a formal charge of zero. And we have one, two, three, four. So I really, I can write this oxygen here having them here or wherever you want. You can write them diagonal, like, you know, having like one, two, three, four, or something like that. However you want to do it, as long as they're there on the oxygen you're going to do your formal charges correctly. Now the, technically the Lewis structure might not be right, you know, technically, technically, but I wouldn't worry about it. So we know that we have two of these. How do we know we have two of these? Well, because you're going to write C2SO4 3. CR. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. CR. <coughs> How do we know that? Well, there's no, like, charge here. Uh, if it's not like minus or mi uh, plus or minus or anything like that. So, we know that that's what we have uh, going on. And since we just did sulfur, and it has a minus two total charge, because we have still have a one, two, charge so we add those together so really this whole thing has a minus two charge so I told you all that to make the point that this has a minus two charge and it's gonna help you with this because chromium is in its D it's got a D orbital and it's very um it can take many charges like quite a few like six or something like that or four of them or something but anyway so we know how we have a minus two just on this sulfate. So minus two times three, we get a minus six. No, this can take many, but it says it's chromium three. Okay, so let's see. What's the lowest common denominator that we can get to make this a zero charge? Well, negative two times three is negative six, so we would need a positive six. Positive 6 and a 6 gives you no charge. This has a 3 charge because it's a 